And we'll wait just a minute or two more. I think we might have a few more people joining us, but let me give you an overview of what to expect this evening. Um, so first of all, we are going to go over what we talked about last week. So if you happen to be joining us for the first time this week, it is the perfect time to jump in. We're gonna be going over contour drawing and I have a few notes. So many of y'all are doing such awesome work, uh, but it's not technically exactly the very precise instructions from Nicolaides, who is our master and guide from on this, these specific techniques that we're doing with the natural way to draw. So I'm gonna be a stickler and go over um, what we're looking for with the gestures and with the contour drawing. And then we will look over our week two drawing schedule and talk about two new exercises from Nicolaides. And that is potential gesture and cross contour. And cross contour happens to be my very favorite out of all of the exercises we do with Nicolaides. So I'm excited about this week. Um, and it's all super weird stuff. <laughs> Any other pressing questions or frustrations actually before I um, start jumping in and talking about contour and gesture and all that good stuff? And you're always welcome to um, yeah. write in the chat, if not uh, the audio. Yes, Marjorie. Jessica, in doing the gesture drawing, I couldn't, I had a hard time locating sites to use. Mm. Um, do you have any suggestions once I can find my pen again? Absolutely. So the one that I recommend for this whole class is called line dash of dash action dot com. And that is a fantastic site for um, hand. Thanks, Linda, for posting that in the chat. Uh, and figures. Okie dokie. So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. So here we are in the course, school.jessicaantonelli, and hopping on into our nine weeks class. Uh, whenever you very first get started, you'll want to click the overview, and you have to click start for that. But we already did week one. We are now diving into week two. And just so you know, when you get here, uh, to access the drawing guide, which is going to have your homework for every single day, you can click the where it says week two. You can also click here where it says drawing guide. Either one will take you to this page where you can see your homework. Um, I think it's great if you can print this out. Uh, as you can see, this week we've got a lot more contour and gesture, which is why we're about to go back over those. And those are going to continue all the way for the rest of the eight weeks that we still have. Then tonight we're gonna to talk about cross contour and potential gesture. So these are two new um, lessons that we'll be incorporating for the rest of our uh, drawing challenge. With contour drawing, I wanted to go over what Nicolaides means when he talks about contour drawing. So let's go to the source itself, uh, Nicolaides book, The Natural Way to Draw. So contour. Um, and if you haven't already seen it, this is the actual text of Nicolaides where you can see what he recommends that you do. And his sections, instead of five, 10, and 15 minutes, are everything from half an hour, 15 minutes, to an hour of contour drawing and gesture drawing. So we're doing a very chilled out version. Thank you. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so when Nicolaides talks about contour drawing, he's talking about outline. So I want you to think of contour as another word for outline or edges. It's all about the line. And as a couple of examples, this is the kind of quality that we're thinking of when we're thinking of a blind contour drawing. So one of the rules for Nicolaides' approach to this style is that you um, do not look at the page that you're drawing you do not uh, pick up your pen until you reach the natural end of a line. What I mean by that is, for example, here we are at a finger. You can see how the artist took the pen, continued all the way up this arm until they reach the natural end of that line. And at that point, you are allowed to pick up your pen or pencil, find another point. So perhaps they started here where um, the buttocks meets the arm and then continue that line until it reaches a natural end. So in this case, the top of the head, say. So you are allowed to occasionally pick your pen or pencil up, 
but we really want to do so as little as possible. And while your pen is touching the page, you're not looking at the page. You're looking with laser-like focus at whatever you're drawing. And what I found was really, really helpful for me in the blind contour drawing was stop, stopping everything and not continuing my line movement with my hand until I had like felt like my eye and the pen were connected. This, it got into like, you're getting into um, complete, like using the force <laughs> uh, <laughs> kind of action. I, it's hard to explain. It's um, like zen. It's very zen. And yeah, thanks. It's, that's part of what I think what makes Nicolaides practice so um, powerful is it's, it's a lot of nonverbal, very kinesthetic or like um, things that are hard to put into words, but we're doing our best to kind of uh, actualize these very different ways of thinking and drawing. Can I ask you a question about this? Please. When you mentioned contour, are you mostly talking about blind contour or contour with where you can shift back and forth between the uh, image and the, and your uh, blind you know, we're doing it blindly. Great question. So uh, traditionally with Nicolaides, when he says contour, he means blind contour. Now, I'm not a big stickler if you want to look back and forth a little bit <laughs> um, whenever you're doing a contour drawing. But we're about to learn some new exercises from Nicolaides that aren't so hardcore. So we're going to do cross contour today where you are allowed to look back and forth at the page as much as you want. So that's kind of a relief. Um, but if you challenge yourself to do the blind contour drawing, I promise you will not believe how quickly you, your eye will just start to understand that looking at the page is not necessary. But it does take a dedication to go in really slowly. And we'll, we'll do this in action in a minute here um, so that you can kind of see how it can work. Um, here's another example of the contour drawing, all about line. You can think of contours as the overall silhouette of objects or some of the smaller lines that make them up, but it's line, out, outline. It's really important in the, in the contours. Um, gesture drawing. Now with gesture drawing, I think this is the best example. We can see a drawing of a bow, like a, a drawing of what a bow would look like if you were going to sit down and just do your best to draw a bow. This is more of a contour drawing. You see how we focus on the outlines and the linear aspects of the bow. Now here we see the gesture drawing. And what is a gesture? It's a, it's a motion, it's a movement, it's expressive. So whenever you're drawing gesture, your goal is not to draw realistically whatever it is that you're looking at. So when we're drawing gesture figures, you're not necessarily gonna wanna have a recognizable page of little humans. Um, you're aiming for a unrecognizable, chaotic little page of scribbles, which is very counter uh, in intuitive. We tend to think like we're gonna be doing these drawing practices so we can draw pretty things <laughs> or at least something realistic. However, we got to think of the big picture. This is a, a nine week, really long term drawing practice. And whenever we every now and then pepper our practice with these gesture drawings and only focus okay. on the line of action, eventually when we go back to drawing realistically again, which will come, um, our drawings have so much more energy and movement and action because we focused only on the gesture in these very isolated um, drawing exercises. So does the gesture mean you have to do it with, without picking up the pencil as well, or you can move it around? Thank you, Gail, great question. Um, you can pick up the pen or pencil as much as you like. Here are a couple other examples. Um, I tend to just keep my pen on the page. Uh, I feel like it, it just starts to flow better and gives me better like connection to my lines. Um, here you can see this person was definitely picking up their, their pen. Some of them just seem like scribbles. Some of them definitely, you can tell where the motion of the, the figure is. Like this is a complete scribble, but I'm seeing sort of a lot of contracted motion, like a figure bent over. Um, 
if you know what you're looking at, that these are figures, it would probably make a lot more sense. But with a lot of these exercises, we're, we're just thinking about the process, not how it's going to end up looking. These aren't things that we frame or show off. These are in your sketchbook in your nine weeks, um, you know, in our course too, when you post them. Uh, but yeah, don't think about the finished product. Think about the, what it's like for you as the artist to be drawing. So Nicolaides is kind of out there in this way. It's a little bit more esoteric. It doesn't make sense in the way of like, I'm going to follow this step-by-step -step how to draw book. And then boom, I have like the duck that looks like a duck or, you know, those little cartoon how-to books. Um, but in the end, you're going to be able to look at models or anything differently and draw much more effectively. So that's what I wanted to really cover for. Um, gesture drawing and contour drawing. Oops. And for some reason, I think me is going crazy. Oops, there we go. Alrighty. So let me also show you a couple of examples of some gesture drawings um, that I was doing last week. Just to give you a little better sense. And some of these were posted. Uh, so I noticed a lot of people were looking at sort of the skeletal form, almost like a stick figure of um, our figures as you're drawing. That can be really helpful. But um, for those of you who have taken lots of figure drawing classes before, there's that temptation to do the traditional figure drawing skeleton with a little like um, notches for the joints. Instead, kind of think about like, almost like you've got a wire figure and you're scribbling around um, with that single line. These are gesture drawings. Um, the movement of like how the wire figure might go. And I'm thinking we can actually stop and practice one of these together. Yeah, let's do that. Yeah. Um, I don't remember. I don't remember seeing last week. Did you do some of these scribble drawings? I don't feel like I, I have a feel for how you Right. how you think as, as about what you're going to be putting down on the paper. Yeah. Um, Could you kind of describe as you go along? Right, what, yeah, let me go do that right now. So I'm just going to pull up. I've got lineofaction.com on. And just so you can see, I'll show you the website. This is lineofaction.com. We go to the figure drawing button. And we'll all be drawing from this in just a little bit. Nude models, both. And for now, I'm just gonna do a really short 30 second gesture drawing as a demonstration for you guys. Um, so, okay, here, here's my model. And so you kind of at least saw what I'm drawing. Oops, let me show you how I'm gonna draw it. So with the gesture drawing, can y'all see me all right? Yep. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Um, I'm going to look for kind of the overall lines and I go quickly. Sometimes I'll even ear trace the overall action before I commit to the drawing. Um, where do I see the movement often in the spine? Where's like, are, is there any muscle contraction? Um, if there's like a lot of air, even in like the lungs, I'll kind of almost draw like a big bubble for that. It's hard to put into words because it's a little bit more um, kinesthetic. Um, and in, in the book, Nicolaides actually says that you can imagine that you are the model. How would it feel if you were in that position? So, I mean, honestly, my um, gesture drawing for that model might look something like this. Like it's a complete scribble, uh, but I started with the big motion of the overall um, spine line where the thrust of the movement was going for the figure and then drew some of the other um, big movements or energy and just tried but to- But do you include, include all of the limbs? You know, the, if the energy is uh, only up here and the feet are static, do you like still do the whole figure? You're doing the whole- yes. Great question. Okay. I would even do props. So in some of these, um, 
pictures, people are holding something like a sword or a rope. So I would absolutely include that, mm -hmm. um, especially if the figure was pulling it or using any type of weight or exertion. And I found even in still poses, so say there's a pose where someone's crouching, I'm just gonna make something up and they've got a lot of weight in their mm -hmm. legs, I might try and you know, add a little bit of extra scribble in areas where I'm feeling like contraction. It's almost like you're scribbling in lines where there's a tightness. And I would say just do your best to have uh, a loose kind of curious approach to how you do this because there's, um, there's no like single right way. And if you take the time to read the Nicolaides, that'll really help. Uh, so I would recommend that if you go through the, the course instructions and read those um, the little notes there. Okay. I'm hoping we'll kind of get the hang of it. But yeah, I think, I think having a few glasses of uh, wine or <laughs> alcohol first would be the better uh, approach. Definitely an option. Loosen up. <laughs> <laughs> Um, great. So that's gesture. Uh, and just wait till you hear the gesture drawing activity we're doing tonight. It's even weirder. Um, let's talk a little bit about contour drawing. I wanted to go over contour drawing as well. Um, so I'm going to go back to the line of action website. And this time, let me show you what I'm doing. We're going to go to hands and feet drawing. We'll do some hands. And I'm going to go really quickly and just do 30 seconds uh, and show you guys an example. So you saw the hands that I'm drawing have some chopsticks. Now, when you are um, contour drawing, I choose a spot on the hand and as slowly as I possibly can without looking at the page, I try to make the connection to where as my eye is moving, that is the exact speed and direction that my pen is moving. And it's poof. the slower and more vertical you can be, the better. Like I just stopped right there. It was 30 seconds and my time was up. But um, is, is the trick is the trick to have your pen and your eye moving exactly at the same speed throughout the whole that helps with the proportion and everything? Exactly, Bob. Yes. Mm -hmm. um, and a break, I, I feel like I had a bit of a break through this week was I, I switched to a bigger piece of paper. <laughs> so this is what I was using before and it was not going very well. I realized I needed to get to a larger piece of paper so my eye and my hand really could work at the same speed. And then I was like super happy with how my blind contour drawing turned out. Yeah, that was oh, that's great. Nice. That's nice. That was awesome. nice. But I had this like instinct to go really small, so I kept like shrinking. So awesome. finally, that's I just connected the line and the hand movement. So, um, so yeah, that is contour drawing, slow, painstaking, um, not looking at the paper. So would you all like to do a quick, maybe um, two, two minute gestures, or two one minute gestures and a short contour before we go on to the new lessons? Sure. Let's do it. Great, guys. So I'm going to share the screen. Let's begin <clears throat> with a contour drawing of hands. So go ahead and grab your sketchbook. How long? Let's do this first one for two minutes. Good. So this is short for a contour drawing. I don't have the picture on the screen. Not yet. Oh, okay. All right, everybody ready? Yes. Yeah. Yep. And begin. Ooh, you can choose if you want the top or the bottom hand.
Oh goodness, I went too fast. So that's two minutes. We're gonna go ahead and do one more. So continue on. Wow. We're doing another contour? Yes, let's do one more. I tell you what, we'll start a new one if no one started this one. So you? Oh. <laughs> Or not? Okay, here's our hand. I can't hear anything. Hello. Oh, hey. Yeah. Oh, now I've got somebody. Yes, we're not talking much right now. <laughs> what are we doing right now? Drawing this? I... Oh, yes. So we're finishing up a two minute contour drawing. Then we'll share our work a little bit and go over any questions about how this whole contour thing works. And then we're gonna do some gesture drawing. Yep, and oh, no. I know. Two minutes is really too short, but. Yeah, way too short. <laughs> I don't, you asked us to do them in a minute, didn't you, for homework? Now, that is the um, gesture drawing. So normally the shortest a contour drawing will ever be in this class is five minutes. Okay. And I'm surprised to find the longer the better. But we're kind of squished for time tonight. So does anybody want um, a little check-in on your contour to see if you're – doing it right or if you just want to show off because you did an awesome one or <laughs> <laughs> Maria see what you got here oh, oh very oh, nice wow really nice. yeah yeah excellent and then that's really good Bob yeah. oh okay so you've got the crazy background so it's kind of hard to see your uh, yeah I can't, I can't drawing, remember but... how to turn it off no worries. What, what I briefly saw was You're, really good. <laughs> your drawing goes underwater. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Excellent. So great. Yeah. Slow and steady, focusing on the edges, bold lines. One thing that this is really helpful for is it gets you out of the bad habit of short little scratchy, what I call chicken scratch lines, which I used to do when I first started drawing yeah. where you're really unsure you think if you sneak up on the line that'll make it <laughs> better um <laughs> switching from pencil to to pentel helped a lot for me <laughs> the really? the line. <laughs> honestly right now as long as you are comfortable not clinching aware of your body working with your you know your at least your wrist your forearm um some of those new nuances you can adjust a little bit later but yeah, stay, stay comfortable, stay kind of loose. So guys, let's go ahead and move along to our new drawing assignments for the week, for week two. So I'm we gonna do a gesture. Oh. Can we do a gesture, please? Oh, Gail, what would I do without you? Okay. <laughs> sorry. Gesture drawing. <laughs> I'm sorry, contour drawing. We did a gesture, right? No. No, no. We did no. Con two contours, no. one gesture. Two contours. Thank God y'all are here. Okay, 
<laughs> so gesture drawing, I'm going to be um, opening the screen again back to our handy lineofaction.com, which has just been going on without us. And we'll go to figure drawing this time. So I'm going to stick with nude models, drawing clothes and stuff is a whole nother job. Oops, both. And let's do two 60 second gestures. Alrighty, so as soon as I click, click get drawing, we're gonna begin and we're gonna focus on drawing the movement, not the outline at all, but the action of these figures. So let's just do our best and begin. How many are we doing? Two. Two? Two. It's time. <laughs> yep, those two. Those were rough. Okie dokie. <laughs> so let me show you what I ended up with, and then we can kind of talk through technique here. Um, and for me, a minute feels long, even for a quick gesture. So I ended up doing like two of each guy. And so my first, this is supposed to be the guy with his leg up, but I put him way too up, up high. So his leg is kind of sticking out. Um, but actually, if you think about the name of the website that we use, lineofaction.com, the first thing that I look for is a, a single line that can best represent the action or the movement of the person who I'm looking at. Um, so for the guy who was sticking his leg out, I felt that the strongest action was actually the kind of forward thrust and like strong groundedness of the line between his spine and his leg that was touching the ground. I started with that line. And then from there, I followed what I felt must have been like the strongest muscles um, that showed him kicking back. And I tried to even over exaggerate a little bit kind of him tilting backward and that balance of energy. Um, as you can see, it does sort of vaguely look like a person, but it's not the kind of, you know, drawing you want to show off of like, look at this awesome figure that I drew. Here, I spent some time chained up in what I saw was tension in the biceps and the muscles of the arm, kind of feeling my way a little bit more slowly as I was making through the line in areas where I felt like the compression of the muscles. Um, so I was drawing in and going slower where there was that tension and I have a faster, smoother line where I see like a pushing out or exertion. 
So that's sort of how I interpret gesture. So what are the, what are the, the pick, if you could put that up one more time. The one on the bottom where he's kicking his leg out. Mm -hmm. No, the other side. I'm sorry, the other one. What are all these scribbles in the middle? No, 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 right on that figure there, the bottom figure, right across his uh, pelvis area. Above this guy? His, yeah, all of those roundabout things and the, the squiggles in the middle, I feel like that's, it's sort of just there, nothing. Right, so actually I drew him first and I realized I left out the fabric. Um, I drew only the figure and then I was looking at it, I was like, this guy's got a big old drapery all over him. And I just was drawing as if, it wasn't there. So I went back and I drew it again. And, and this time I tried to draw the flowiness of the fabric wrapped around his leg. So right. that was following that action. Okay. Mm -hmm. but I, I thought the, uh, the, the one guy, I thought his, his foot had a lot of, uh, the, sure. the guy in the left, I mean, he had a, a great big base on him because he was balanced. I'm going to try and see if I can get your um, figure up here. Oh, yeah. And are you using triple day or like a marker? Uh, it's a pen pill. Okay. But <laughs> We're seeing a little but bit I of thought, ocean popping through, but... Um. Yeah, yeah, I know. I'll, I'll figure that out. And I also thought the drapery was sort of important because it would seem very moving around and all. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks. I, I was... I, I couldn't see the far, in our view, the far left end, but it seemed to me that the fabric was actually in tension, that he was leaning, it, pulling against it or leaning against it. Mm -hmm. Yes, absolutely. And that's why those props, be it like a piece of fabric or something else, can be so important mm -hmm. to show that the interplay of like the tension and the, the movement, mm -hmm. the energy, the action. Um, I just saw Bianca holding her sketch up. That looked great. Bianca, you got... Um, I think you've got a really great grasp of like the structure and thinking skeletally. Let me pop that up again. But feel free to get even looser and flowier and start thinking about muscle movement, but your proportions are spot on and getting the, um, you can be even more exaggerated with uh, some of the movement. And that is a lesson in itself is over time figuring out like, wow, even if I go really extremely in that, arch of the back or whatever it still looks kind of natural marjorie yes. very nice yes hold it up just a little bit more would you awesome oh yeah Good scribbles i'm so proud Thanks. <laughs> um anyone else want to oh zach i see you there i feel like mine are very scribbly is that is very that scribbly. Scribbly. oh it's nice okay. oh, cool. i like it yes and i like how you're like kind of <laughs> the torso like kind of where the torso itself would be kind of twisting kind of following that twisting motion awesome. it looked like yoga cool like i, I liked what jessica i just i love what you were saying about like starting where there's the most energy in the painting or i'm sorry in the painting in the figure mm -hmm. um, where i start like with intense like scribbles because that's where I feel all the energy is. Like I would imagine if I were a figure for like a prolonged period of time and I had to hold that pose. So if I were modeling, had to hold that pose forever, that's where I'd be cramping. And so, like, <laughs> <laughs> that's good. I like that. Where I'd be feeling all the, uh, in, the intense uh, muscle tension over a long period of time. I like that. I've seen a couple more sketches, Naomi. This, that's another great example of just what Zach's talking about mm. like that the tension and the twistiness. And I like her ribs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I like the ribs. Yeah. Who else was just showing something off? In there? Madeline was. was. I see Madeline, I see Carol. Let me get Carol up here. And then I, and I see you next. Ooh, hold that back a little bit. Those are beautiful. Very nice and loose. You yeah, know, they're, they're getting better. I, you know, I had, dealt with the thing of what you said was more modeling and just trying to get the loose gesture now. Ugh, I'm so jealous of that big, huge pad of paper. I need to... I know. I like how big that is. Upgrade. Yeah, I, but I'm not... I'm still filling it up with smaller things, like they're one, two, six, 
six figures on one sheet. So I'm not really swooping around the whole 18. But oh, it's, it's looking great, Carol. You're really capturing the energy of it. And Jen, I've got you up. Let's let's see the scribbles. Ooh, very nice. Mm. Are you using charcoal? No, I'm just using pencils to be. I have charcoal here, but I think charcoal would actually be really fun. Charcoal is really fun. And also, if you use it right and don't bear down, it can be really nice and flowy for, for this kind of activity. Mm. So, Jessica? Uh, yes. If I, I started doing charcoal, and those were the ones that you said were filled um, in. One thing, one thing. Oh, and yes, Marjorie, was that you asking a question? Okay, one thing that I'm finding, like I don't have the capacity to draw yet to draw a human figure, but doing the gesture stuff, I've drawn a lot of different figures and like you can tell that they're figures, you can tell what they're doing. I mean, it's it's exciting. Like they, they look much better than if I tried in a different way. <laughs> You know, no, seriously, that's excellent. And I think with Nicolaides, you really learn to draw the figure inside out. You know, we start with these really yeah. strange, you know, drawing energy, but then eventually, you know, give it a few more weeks. We're gonna. I can see it really helping me. I'm, I'm excited with it. Yay! Well, um, so just for the sake of time, I don't want to keep y'all super long. And normally we aim for an hour. I know we might have a little more time on our hands. Uh, so it looks like class will go a little longer. If you do need to dip out, uh, this will all be recorded and posted and emailed to you, so no worries. Um, but let's go ahead and start looking into soft contour and potential gesture drawing, our two new exercises for uh, our drawing homework for the coming week. So actually, let's start with potential gesture. We just what did- What kind of gesture? I didn't hear you. It's called potential gesture. Potential gesture. Potential okay. gesture. And this is where, um, I don't know, Nicolaides makes me smile. He's really asking us to uh, get into the shoes of our, of our model and really think through the energy and the motion in a whole different way here. So I just wanted to point out, I'm back here in our nine weeks with the Natural Way to Draw course. Um, over here in the table of contents. Um, if I open all this up, you can see the week two. And anytime you want to learn more about one particular exercise, you'll see them labeled and you can click for a really in-depth um, discussion of the exercise. So potential gesture. The short description of this is that you're going to look at a picture of the model and you're not going to draw what the model is doing. You're going to draw <laughs> what you think the next movement that the model would naturally make would be. So, and as Nicoletti says here, instead of drawing the pose you see, however, draw what you think the model may do next. That like an animated, animated cartoon. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Um, and he says the effort to realize how the model could move from his present position, what it would be possible for him to do and what he might want to do will help you understand the forces at work behind the action that you see. So whenever you are in the site as well, there are lots of links to the line of action website. So here, for example, you could click there and go straight to the, um, the model. Uh, so let's do a couple of these together and see how it goes. And then we'll talk about our other activity. But is anybody immediately horrified or excited or? Horrified. <laughs> horrified. Fair enough. Fair enough. So before we actually draw, we're going to do a one minute potential gesture. But before we start drawing, let's just talk through a few of these and think about how we might imagine the model is going to move next. So just to talk through this. So I'm seeing this guy with his leg up, arm out. I'm going to guess the next thing he would do is maybe down. put the leg down. Yeah, start putting the leg down. So I might put the leg like halfway down or completely down. 
or maybe even more up. Maybe he's even more uh, <laughs> flexible and he could extend this, this point all the way out. And often with potential gesture, what I'll do is I'll keep, you know, maybe 90% of the pose the same and maybe only move the leg. So you can use the pose as it is and just adjust it. Let's try another one. What do you think she might do next? Swing her arms the other way. Go to the opposite side. Yeah. Yep. Love it. Flip it. Mm -hmm. Kind of, you could do an inverse of that pose. Jessica? Yes. When we do the potential drawing, do we do it as a contour or as a gesture drawing? It's a gesture. This is potential gesture okay. drawing. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. This is a tough one because it's still. It's a tough one. I think he would take his arm and go up with it. Yeah. Pick his head up. Like a release of that. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Okay, last one. Just talking. I think you oh, go ahead, Jen. I was going to say, I think he'd put his left butt cheek down. <laughs> <laughs> He's balanced on one leg. I think he'd yeah. actually straighten his back. Yeah. yeah. So tangled. Kind of want to help him get more comfortable. <laughs> oh, great. So last one, what do you think she might do next? Back bend. Ooh. Go forward. She might put her go forward. Leg and then lift that yeah, back leg. Switch so I, back. I, I like Bianca. She's got the ballerina yeah. <laughs> perspective. You're going to have some elegant, elegant ones. All right. Well, are y'all ready? Y'all want to try one? Sure. Yeah. Let's do... Let's do one and talk and then one more and go on to the next lesson. So everybody ready? I'm gonna to go to a new model. We'll draw for one minute. On your marks, get set. Ooh, okay, potential gesture. What will she do next? Oh, this is brutal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And by the way, you can look at your page if, if you're wondering. And I'm, I'm just going to go back to that one and pause it. But let me show you what I ended up with. Um, and then we can go around if anybody else wants to share. So I sort of imagined she would extend that arm back out. Well, it's imaginary because I just kept that arm going and going. <laughs> I had her arm go up. You had her arm go up. You did? Let me pop you up here. Oh, sorry. Uh, one sec. Judith first. Oh, wow. wow that's oh, nice. Wow. Even got the little that's really good, Judith. Here we are. Okay, let's, let's try this, lady. So one minute. Everybody ready? Go for it. <laughs> Yeah. Let's go. Oh my gosh, I forgot to push the timer. So a couple more seconds, y'all. And time. 
kind of a funny one. She's a little bit more relaxed, but um, I've got to go. Good night. <laughs> oh, night, Bye. Susu. We'll send Bye. you the replay for the last bit. Thank Bye. you. Okay, so this was Sleepy Lady here. Um, I tried to follow some of the curviness of like her back folding over here, but the main thing I did was just extend an arm and slightly different. I did the exact same pose. That's so funny. Oh, yay. You want to show yours off, Judith? Oh, yeah. There it is. Nice. I extended her leg. Yes. Isn't that interesting? You kind of get a sense. Oh, that's beautiful, Linda. Really nice. Yeah. Um, Zach. Oh, yeah. Oh, nice. Opened up the Very arm. Loose. Mm -hmm. um, right. So you have the opportunity to continue, like, using maybe the main torso. It's not like you have to invent a completely different figure or pose. It's just some shift slightly different from what the model is doing. And I'm loving seeing everybody's different interpretation of what might come next, but it's all sort of a release of, or kind of an extension of some energy that might be uh, pretty cool. All right, cross contour. Let's talk about our last activity or exercise that we'll be meeting this week, the cross <coughs> So I'm back to sharing my screen. And Here we are back in the lesson. So week two, cross contour. This is very related to edges and the outlines that we think about when we think about traditional contour drawing. But with cross contour, we're almost thinking um, in like the way that a, a cartographer would create a topographical map. It's like we wanna get uh, the form, the three dimensionality of the outline by not just drawing the outlines on the edges of the object, so here we see an apple, but also drawing sort of these horizontal cross um, lines. I think of it as the latitude and longitude lines of a globe. So if you're looking at the sphere of a globe, you see vertical lines, um, you know, crossing around, kind of like how we see with this apple here showing uh, how it pops out. We also see the horizontal lines wrapping around the form, um, like you would longitude lines. And I highly recommend taking the time to read through this whole page here that's in the cross contour explanation. Um, a good way he explains it here is, the line of a cross contour follows around the shape of the figure somewhat as a barrel hoop follows the rounded shape of a barrel. It dips down into the hollows and rises up over the muscles, much as a piece of adhesive tape would if placed along the line that you expect to draw in the contour of a leg, for example. Um, so you're not gonna see a lot of flat lines in a cross contour drawing. So here we see a little puppy dog in his little puppy dog bed. You, you really begin to see the form emerge through these cross contours, tracing the form. So this is one that I think benefits from just jumping right in and trying it. <laughs> I see some confused faces. Um, any immediate questions seeing how this uh, goes before we do some drawings from the model? Yeah. Oh, yes, Zach. Um, how strictly should we follow Nicolaides um, instruction to make it a right angle from the contour point? Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like he says about how like when you are making, when you would <laughs> create a contour line, you would be going with the line, but this particular exercise is an exercise in like creating right angles or yeah, guess, horizontal figure. Yeah. Um, I mean the right angle thing, obviously that's, I'm going to, I'm strictly, if I'm, I'm sorry, if I'm told something like stick to that I'm gonna do it. So. <laughs> um, yeah, great question. In, I, I would say don't be super duper strict, uh, especially because, especially when things are like very curvy, you might end up with things at diagonals, more like the examples that I just showed rather than like a very strict globe with the longitude and longitude lines that are very perpendicular. 
But I think as long as you have that concept that we're not just scribbling randomly, mm -hmm. but we're considering the topography going, you know, especially horizontally around a figure, but also every now and then throwing in vertical lines as needed. And I think I better do a demo of this uh, before we do anything else. So let me just pop myself up here. And I'm, I'm looking at that model we just did. The, um, the potential gesture of, I'll flip this upside down. And really good news here is you are allowed to look, look at the page and at <laughs> the model as much as you want. So if I begin, um, I'll keep it this little thing. So I could start, I could start this several different ways. Let me see. Um, I might start with a contour drawing traditionally, just kind of doing my best to draw what I see of, I'm just gonna do only the leg for time sake. So this is to me what I'm seeing for the outline of her knee and leg. I would then come and start to imagine. Could you move it in a little? I, I don't know if anybody else, yeah, it's better. Right. It's in the screen, thank mm -hmm. you. Slightly better? Okay. Yep, much better. So. Now I'm going to imagine that my pen is wrapping around her leg like as, as if just like we do with the contour drawing with the contour drawing we're imagining that our pen is reaching out and touching the model. I'm now imagining that my pen is hovering and kind of going wrapping around in this case the cylindrical form of oops, the leg and then as it turns, that becomes oh, nice. a little bit more like that. And so my proportions are, you know, whatever right now, but like that's the idea of going like horizontally versus vertically. And I'm just like, so this sort of st it starts to look like stockings almost <coughs> instead of just a single leg or flat lines for the leg. Yeah. Have the, you have the contour of it. The ra yeah, wrapping. Yeah. And I could continue with lines like so, but it's kind of going to depend on how much time you have and um, yeah, what feels right for you as you're drawing. What's that heart? What did that vertical line indicate that you just drew the last line? That was me imagining I was tracing my um, pen or line over the mid of middle of her thigh, just to get like a topographical trace. Where it starts to curve the, the height. afterwards, right after that. The Where point. I can imagine like the top, the the okay. roundest part of her leg was popping up. But I wouldn't. I probably wouldn't draw that line. I really like doing um, cross contour only with the horizontal lines and just maybe a few vertical or um, okay. perpendicular lines thrown in. And that is to taste. So you saw from the examples on the website, a bit more scribbles with lots of vertical and horizontal lines. Um, myself, I like more horizontal. Nicolaides mentions he focuses more on just the horizontal. Um, but it's that idea of mapping the topography and what it would feel like to go over the three-dimensional volume of the, the figure. And that's the thing we're gonna see more and more of with Nicolaides is we're gonna really be kind of carving out these figures in our minds, but on the pages. It's gonna get even weirder, y'all. Any other questions or thoughts or concerns before we try this ourselves? Question, yes, uh, do I have to do figures or could I do objects? Uh, when I'm doing homework? You can do whatever you want and <coughs> Still lives and objects look great using this method. Okay, thanks. Sure thing. Y'all ready to ju jump in? Yep. Okay, so just because we're already a little bit familiar with her, I'm gonna go, actually, you know what, we're gonna need more time. So let's do a, um, would y'all prefer no. hands or a figure? Hands or a 
figure, or you could even do a still life object around you if you'd rather do that. I can't do hands. <laughs> so figures. So let's go ahead and do a two minute cross contour um, to your best ability. And if you feel like you only want to do a part of the drawing and not the whole thing, that's fine. I think this is actually great. Um, so two minutes, doing your best with cross contour. Time begins now. And you can look as much as you want. Those ribs. Oh my God. <laughs> Looks like a zebra. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, do you want two more minutes, y'all? Yeah. Um, yes. yes. Okay. Sure. <laughs> I got like a, an elbow. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And where you do see the ribs and the musculature popping out, that's exactly the kind of topography line that we're looking for. <laughs> Unfair. All right. <laughs> well, hopefully just for the um, experience of the process here. I certainly didn't get a chance to finish, but let me show you what, I, what mine's looking like. And I know I'm going to need to keep practicing this a lot. My little zebra woman. Oh, yeah. So... You know, I'm thinking maybe my 
initial contour I should be really light on and give myself a, maybe a guiding line on one half of the figure and just let the cross contour lines define the ending of the figure, being able to come back and look. Just, you know, having practiced not or drawing without looking, it feels like such a luxury to be able to look at the page now. <laughs> um, I did the figure in two minutes and then I did my um my puppy up here. My flashlight. Oh wow. Oh my gosh, dude, you are fast. Well, I thought you were only gonna do two minutes, so I, <laughs> I rushed right. through the <laughs> <laughs> That's great. Excellent example. That's so are helpful. You not, Jessica, are you not supposed to do the outline, the contour outline? You can. It's it's up to you. Um, you can do just the horizontal lines. <coughs> Ooh, and Diane, I see yours up here. Here, check out some other examples, Marjorie. So here you can see Diane did the outline. <laughs> but quickly and very loosely and then came back for cross contours. That's beautiful, Diane. Thank you. So, it's looking good, you guys. I think we're officially ready to dive into week number two. So I'm going to pop up one last time our homework for the week. And if you're interested, um, I'd love to have you hang out a little bit to go over how to post in the website. Totally optional. It'll be on the replay if you are just pooping right now. Uh, but week number two, when you go to our course under week two, you'll see that you can either uh, snap a picture like some people did, or you can download and print from this little um, link right here. So we're doing blind contours on the first day, but cross contours on, on, on the third day. Yeah, on the second <coughs> and third day. Yeah. Whew. Well, we just crammed a lot in, everybody. Way to go. Thank you for hanging out and drawing with us tonight and showing up and committing to this practice. It's just going to get Yay. better and better every week. So, Have a good I'm, week, everyone. Yeah. Thank, Thank you. you. Bye. Bye. Thank you.